GCSE Astronomy, Topic 10, Sunspots. We need to know stuff about sunspots. Now, sunspots were actually discovered by Galileo, and he took some sketches of sunspots moving across the surface of the, scun the sun. Interesting, he did end up blind when he was in uh, house arrest for the last few years of his life. He was blind. I wonder why he was blind. Figure it out. What are sunspots? Well, they appear dark on the surface of the sun, and that's because they are cooler. They are cooler regions on the surface of the sun. When I say cooler, they're not cool. I mean 4,200 compared to 5,500, but they are cooler regions. They're caused by the magnetic field of the sun. The magnetic field of the sun on the surface bursts out in loops. It comes out of the sun, it goes back into the sun, and where it comes out and goes back in, that's where you get sunspots. And that's why sunspots usually appear in pairs, as the magnetic field and the material that it carries leaves and enters the surface. That produces these pairs of sunspots. Now, I put together some pictures from the SOHO website of the surface of the sun. Uh, I believe this is in 2006. And if we watch, we can actually see that the sunspots move across the surface of the sun. This is actually one of the bits of coursework you can do if you have a solar scope, if you can look at the sunspots on the surface. And what you can actually work out by taking measurements off these pictures is you can work out the period of rotation of the sun. The sun is rotating. And by measuring the position of sunspots, we can work out its period. What we find is very interesting that it spins faster in the middle. Around the equator, it's about 24 and a half days to rotate, whereas near the poles, it's about 38 days to rotate. Remember that the outside of the sun isn't a solid body. It's actually made up of a, a thing called a plasma, which is like a fluid, like a gas and the sun spins faster around the equator. How would you actually measure the period of rotation? You would take pictures of the sun, you'd put a grid over the top. If you, if you read this here, the meridians on the here are 15 degrees apart, and if it took four days to travel uh, four of these meridians, which is 60 degrees, how long would it take to travel one degree, and then how long would it take to travel 360 degrees and then you can figure out the rotational period of the Sun. This is important you need to know the number of sunspots follows an 11 year cycle. The number of sunspots gets bigger and bigger and bigger and then it gets less and less and less. From solar min to solar max and then back to solar min again is an 11 year cycle. And during this time, the number of sunspots changes and also the sunspots move towards the equator. There's a diagram which has come up on the GCSE exam a couple of times called a butterfly diagram. And that represents the number of sunspots over time. So as time goes by from left to right on the diagram, the number of sunspots gets bigger and then it gets smaller and they move towards the equator and it's an 11 year cycle. Why does this happen? And it's all to do with the sun's magnetic field. Now, the sun has a strong magnetic field. And as we said earlier, because the sun rotates faster in the middle, as time goes by, what's gonna happen is that the magnetic field is gonna get twisted, okay? It's gonna get twisted in the middle as the sun carries it with it. And the number of sunspots increases more and more as the field gets more and more twisted. And then after 11 years, there's a big release of energy and the sun's magnetic field flips over. Every 11 years, it flips over and then the cycle starts again.